And we say good morning, uh, Bloomberg Surveillance on Bloomberg Television and Bloomberg Radio Worldwide, a conversation with the vice chairman of the Fed. He needs no introduction, Stanley Fisher's contribution to economics at the Massachusetts Institute of uh, Technology, his work uh, at the Bank of Israel and now at the Fed has been critical to stability and to economic growth uh, within uh, this world. I dare say I would mention the International Monetary Fund and a modest crisis of a few uh, years ago. You gave a speech, sir, a wonderful speech at Warwick to some undergraduates. It was just a great, simple speech. The economy is an extremely complicated mechanism. Are we getting more complicated because of rising inflation? Rising inflation in Germany, rising inflation for different reasons in the United Kingdom, and suddenly a lift in inflation in America. It was very complicated when the inflation rate was negative uh, and very low. Uh, this is, uh, we have a target of 2% inflation and uh, we're heading in that direction. And so it's not making life more complicated at the moment. Very high inflation, which of course we will do what we have to, to prevent, uh, could complicate the situation, but we're not there uh, by any means. How do you define high inflation? Not of Walter Heller of another time and place. I look at Dennis Lockhart, who will join us on Bloomberg later today. The Atlanta Fed numbers, sticky inflation, the Dallas inflation, the Cleveland inflation. What is the, 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 the number, the statistic that begins to suggest high inflation? Our uh, target is 2%. Obviously, you don't hit it exactly. You hope to be very close to uh, 2%. We're as worried about being below as being above. Uh, and, uh, you, you know, it's something which is if you're very close to 2%, it's not a problem. If it's significantly above, uh, you begin to worry and you begin to act. Part of our relationship over the years at Davos and in, in, in other important meetings has been, I really don't talk to you about the parlor game, but I unfortunately have to uh, today. I believe there is an Ides of March meeting, a March 15th meeting. We saw Jan Hatzius and Goldman Sachs change their probabilities of what the Fed will do. Not specifically, what will you do at the March meeting, but does this new inflation dynamic change the cadence of two or three uh, rate increases as we go to the end of the year? Well, I, I don't want to give you numbers on sure. two, two or three, uh, but we this is consistent with what we had thought uh, should be happening around, around now. Uh, that is that we'd be moving closer to the 2% inflation rate and uh, that the labor market would continue to strengthen. If those two things happen, uh, we'll will be on uh, the path that we more or less expected. So important is the idea of moving through uh, the year for your Fed within the politics of Washington, as I'm sure you're aware, Washington's in turmoil. My colleague Michael McKee uh, was talking to me yesterday about how the Fed acts differently as you go to year end. This year end of 2017, I would suggest is different than any other year end you've seen. Maybe you will leave. Maybe Chair Yellen will leave. Is there a political mix to the pressures you face in meetings later this year? I, we really uh, do not take, uh, make political decisions. We take into account what is happening uh, in the economy, what people think about, uh, and what might happen to uh, policy. But uh, we're not going to make uh, our decisions uh, on the basis of uh, mm. what, what, the, uh, what pressures we're getting politically. We have targets. Right. We're aiming to get the targets. Are we still ultra-accommodative? You own that phrase. <laughs> Are we still in the land of ultra-accommodative? I think we're in the land of accommodative. I, I'm not sure about uh, yeah. ultra uh, well, this is Stanley Fisher. Good morning to all of you on Bloomberg Radio and Bloomberg Television. Um, I, I love the CFR speech of November to the Council on Foreign Relations. You, you, I love your mathematics, the halving of productivity. We've cut our productivity growth in half. That's the core issue. Is it about technology? Is it about automation? Can you give us this mysterious thing, the efficiency of economy? What's the why of our halving? Uh, We've, 
the worldwide, there's a slowdown in measured productivity. There are some people who argue, and they have a basis for their arguments, that uh, the data become less and less appropriate as the economy moves to being more and more a services uh, economy. Productivity growth was most rapid in the manufacturing sector, uh, always. That's where you see it happening. We have a very small manufacturing sector in terms of employment. We're, in fact, producing roughly the same share of GDP uh, in manufacturing that we did 20 years ago. Uh, but the, uh, no, the number of workers there is down because they've become mm -hmm. more, uh, more productive. So the, uh, the why is that we don't really have a very good uh, story at the moment, whether it is measurement, and there certainly is a measurement factor. It's very hard to measure uh, as you're looking at sort of the comfort, the comfort you have mm. in your home and so forth. Um, and uh, we're looking at why it's declined as education of the workforce, uh, but we don't have a single factor to say that's it. We've got it. We've just got to fix that. We've got to do a lot of things to try and get productivity to go up. You know, on the International Watch, two decades ago, you wrote IMF essays from a time of crisis. It was a little red book, not Mao's red book. It was Fisher's uh, red book, and you had to read it if you were doing anything in international economics. Bring the time of crisis to the United States of America. We have someone in the White House now who was elected with a primal scream of, we're fed up with the international dialogue. We need wage growth in America. How can you and how can Fed officials assist President Trump towards wage growth? Well, wage growth has started happening. I mean, the rate of increase of wages has gone up. It's somewhere. We we're looking at numbers between two and a half and three, basically, uh, which is not far off where uh, we thought it would be. Mm -hmm. And uh, so we can help by doing what we're supposed to do, which is to keep inflation under control, uh, around 2 percent, close to 2 percent, and uh, by continuing to, uh, mm -hmm. to increase allow the interest rate to be such that right. uh, the economy will grow and that employment in particular will grow. The guesstimate, uh, Vice Chairman Fisher, of whether inflation is persistent and will rise or if it will fake and move back to lower inflation, a uh, true disinflation has been there. The Japanese faced this uh, a, a number of years ago. James Bullard of St. Louis has spoken about a regime change. It is controversial uh, in economics. Is this a point where we see Bullard's regime change move from low-level interest rates to high-level interest rates, or do you need to see more evidence? Uh, we're, uh, we're, we've said for a long time we expect interest rates to be gradual, and uh, if they reach levels of previous years, it'll be a matter of years, not of, uh, not of uh, weeks and w or months. And we don't know what will happen. That's why we make decisions on, on mm -hmm. policy as we see events in the economy. Uh, so uh, I don't know whether we'll end up in a new uh, regime or uh, whatever, whatever Jim Bullard calls it. Uh, but I do know that we will be aiming and very likely will be close to 2% 2 mm -hmm. inflation uh, and uh, full employment, which somewhere around where we are now, a little, possibly a bit lower. I get a lot of mail when I hear Fed officials talk about full employment. People send me letters and they talk about, no, we're not at full employment, at least not in my town, my uh, community. When, when I look at the sum total of what you and Chair Yellen have to deal with every day, it is this repression, a financial repression, a societal repression within America. How do we, how do we bring the two Americas to a better good? One America is near full employment, but another America is not. How can you help them? Well, there are, there are d differences between uh, the states in, uh, in terms of, em of employment. And uh, we, can only, we can only bring them together by setting the uh, framework in which economic decisions are made. Uh, 
namely what can people think about the stability of the value of the dollar our, our 2 percent inflation will cause them to think if we're there that it that we're in a stable inflation situation a stable price uh, situation and if we're at full employment those pressures for hiring people uh, will uh, will spread from state uh, to state. But we shouldn't exaggerate the uh, differences. We shouldn't exaggerate the number of states that are uh, below, uh, that are above the uh, average. I, I've been talking to people from different states in late, lately, and uh, everybody I speak to happened to be below the average uh, in the last few days. There are states like that as well. Getting uh, the big issue is not so much states, it's what are the professions that people grew up in and what's happened to those professions and how, given that this economy has to be dynamic, it is one of the most dynamic, if not the most dynamic in the world, how do we make sure that those people whose skills are, uh, are, dec are declining relative to what the market needs, how do we, ha how do we help them? come out and get good jobs again. One final question. I'm not going to ask you about Russian intelligence or the other politics of Washington. The political storm that your Washington is in right now is remarkable. Whatever anybody's political view, people are buffeted day to day by the news flow. In your world of economics, is this American economy in your classic textbook, Dornbush, Fisher, Stars, is this normal economics that we're living today? Or is there something unique about our American economic experiment? Well, we're, we're coming out of a period, of a very long period in which the economy had to be returned to health after the, uh, financial cri after the great financial crisis of 2008, 2009. Unemployment was quite high during that period. Fortunately, as a result of policies, uh, their uh, unemployment is close to its average level. But as you say, the average isn't what happens in, to everybody. Um, and uh, I think that's the underlying uh, issue that we have to deal with. And as of uh, now, we haven't seen a major change in the environment in which we're working. We're expecting the economy to warm up. Uh, the election results may have had some effect uh, on how rapidly uh, it seemed to warm up. But, uh, you know, we're dealing, we, we have to ask where will we be a few months from now, not what is happening today. Mm -hmm. We haven't very much changed uh, our view of where we will be. We do expect the economy to be growing at a reasonable rate. And uh, I think uh, anybody who's deeply interested in this would have listened to Janet Yellen yesterday and uh, the day before uh, talking about signs of strengthening of the economy and uh, the reason that the Fed is a little more confident about where we're going and how soon we'll get to uh, employment with uh, with stable prices.